Hey brothers, what's going on? JK, your brother in the struggle here. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I came across a video on the internet and the lady in this video is talking about a very interesting topic and it has to do with promiscuity, sex before marriage, and how this impacts relationships. And since we help men end the out of control behavior with pornography, sex and masturbation, I know that many men have questions about this. Like, what does having multiple partners have to do with my reboot? How does it impact my self image? Is it a good thing? Or is it a bad thing? And I don't know who this lady is. I just came across this and I watched one of her videos and I had to stop and I decided to give feedback to it in a video. Um, this isn't rehearsed or anything. I'm just giving my honest feedback on this because from the way she was speaking, it was already really juicy. When I say juicy, it means that she's saying some things with a lot of confidence and a lot of people are responding to it in a positive way. Um, for instance, this video has 828 comments and 28,000 likes. But just because somebody's sharing something doesn't mean they're right, just because they have a large audience. And there are a few things here that I disagree with. So I'm just gonna share my feedback on this. We're gonna start with this video right here. So having a high body count as a man makes you more masculine, makes you more attractive, it makes you this, it makes you that, blah, blah, blah. Nonsense. When you sleep around as a... Okay, I agree with her on that. She says having a high body count, so having a lot of partners sleeping around makes you more valuable as a man. I absolutely agree. Um, I don't think it does. It's not really something to boast about to other men. Not many men care about that. Um, there are many other things of value as a man. Let's see what she says next. A man, you get addicted to novelty. For women who sleep around, it just... Okay, let's pause right there. She says, when you sleep around as a man, you get addicted to novelty. Now, I disagree with this. There are actually no studies that show that men who have sex with multiple partners get addicted to novelty. But we're going to come back to this breaks their pair bond but they don't actually enjoy novelty the same way men do evolutionary wise they are actually afraid of novelty because it poses a evolutionary risk this is true so in general women are not that excited about novelty because it is a risk um they could get pregnant back in the day um so they couldn't go around having sex with multiple men women are programmed to find the man that would be the best fit for them genetically and that could be a good provider in the long term, or sometimes even in the short term, while they're pregnant and raising their children. A person who could provide and protect them. For men, novelty is attractive. Find it impossible to sustain a long-lasting... Novelty is not just attractive for men. Novelty is the way that men are biologically wired. Men are biologically wired to spread their seed to as many uh, women as possible. We're not talking about the morals of it. We're talking about evolution right here. So I just wanted to clarify. It's a little bit more than just, oh, it's, it's an attractive thing that I like. It's how you are wired. And for those of you who are struggling with an out of control sexual behavior, this is something you have to accept. You first have to accept that there's nothing wrong with you for wanting to be with multiple women. There's a reason why the pornography industry is so, uh, uh, is so pervasive and so successful. There's a reason why you're not just watching one scene and ejaculating or orgasming to it. There's a reason why you have multiple tabs, why you're looking at other women. You are programmed that way. But in order for you to control your sexual behavior, you're not going to do so if you're living in denial of your male evolutionary needs. Monogamous relationship. If you want to become a father, and if you want to have a settled home, you have to practice the art of monogamy. 
because children need it from you and traditional women who want to get married and stay loyal they need it from you the only woman that's going to accept your promiscuity is one who's also promiscuous so i'll say this there are a lot of people out there who are deep down they're traditionalists all right so they are staunch traditionalists and they're sharing something in a very intelligent way and in a way that people really want to hear because she's obviously attractive. She's sharing, she's speaking very fast. She's sharing things in an authoritative way. She's speaking clearly and decisively. And a lot of people can get carried away by that. She's making sense with some things. Let's go back to what she said about monogamy. I agree. I think if you want to raise children as a father and you want to have a settled home, monogamy is something that you need to engage in. Within the porn reboot system, we call that rewiring your brain to monogamy. No issue with that. However, when she says the only women who are going to accept a man being promiscuous are also women who are being promiscuous, that is not true at all. So she's negating what she said earlier on. Men are promiscuous because of novelty and women in general are not likely to be promiscuous because evolutionary speaking, they need the safety and it's so much of a risk. But right now she goes on to say that, oh, it's only promiscuous women who will accept a promiscuous man. That's not true. The truth is men still have the capacity to be promiscuous. It's just that a lot of men who are, pro uh, are practicing monogamy are still engaged in that novelty. They are not going out to have sex with other women, but they are definitely watching pornography. And in my <laughs> over a decade's experience working with men uh, uh, to help them end their out of control behavior, I know there are, there are a lot of promiscuous men who out actually go out there and have sex, but there are a lot of men who want to be monogamous, but they haven't let go of novelty. So they are still engaging in that. When it comes to the promiscuous man, the truth that a lot of people don't want to talk about is that there are women who tolerate their men going out there and having sex with other women. As a matter of fact, there are many cultures where this is accepted and expected. And throughout history, it was quite normal in many cultures for men to have mistresses, for men to go out and solicit prostitutes. Um, this was very normal. It was normal for kings and men of power to have concubines and multiple wives. In many cases, it was even inserted into the, the religions of those cultures. So again, I want to make it clear. I'm not justifying anything. We have, after all here at Porn Reboot, what we're trying to do is get men to control their sexual behavior. But I think it's a little bit disingenuous to just say that um, only promiscuous women would allow their, their men to go out and do that. That is not true. There are a lot of women in many relationships, and I have had clients in those situations who are fine with their husbands doing it, just as there are many women who are okay with their husband viewing pornography. We have many men who have told their partner, hey, I have this problem with pornography, and she's like, so what? I thought every guy, I thought every guy did it. Like, why are you telling me? Like, I didn't know it was an issue for you. I didn't even know it could be an issue. So let's just make that part clear. In this day and age, it doesn't exist where a woman is just going to be okay with you going sleeping around and she's just going to be at home waiting for you because you're a high value man. It doesn't work like I also disagree with this. I don't endorse it. My preference is monogamy because it keeps you away from drama and drama is emotional validation and it also keeps your children safe. Nobody wants their children to grow up in a chaotic home. At the same time, the fact remains that there are women who will stay in a relationship where the man is out having sex with multiple women and she is fine with it. As a matter of fact, in many of these relationships, the husband has sat down with the wife and he has talked to her about it. In many of these relationships, the woman is often financially dependent on the man. It doesn't mean that she's not making, she's not making any money. It just means that usually this is the type of man who is providing a certain level of lifestyle for her. He's providing things that she might not necessarily not have 
not been able to get, but she was not willing to get those things. So she was like, yeah, like I work hard, I'm well educated, I make good money, but this guy is driven. He's hyper competitive. Let's say he's making $700,000 a year after taxes and she's making, let's say 95 to 120,000, right? Just generalizing here. There are certain things that he's going to be able to provide for her that she might not be able to have. And if he is a loving husband, if he's a caring father, if he has treated her right, you would be surprised the number of women who would look at that and go, huh, you know what? That's fine. What are the rules? I'm not saying that it's not going to, it's going to be an easy decision or she agrees to it. I think that there's also a very negative aspect to that where a woman could experience a lot of betrayal trauma and actually stay in a relationship when she doesn't want to. My point is that there are many women who deal with that and are actually okay with that. I'm not arguing for it. I really have to put this disclaimer out there. <laughs> But again, I'm not a fan of just these blanket statements about relationships um, because there are some people who this is actually the only option for them in a relationship. And when I say there are some people, there actually are some women that this is the only option for them in a relationship. And I'm going to talk about that in a, in a separate video that has to do with uh, dating reboot. She's using your credit card to book a holiday with the man that she's sleeping with. So you're practicing... Nah, it's unlikely that that's happening. However, she is right about one thing. I think what she's alluding to is that in the Western world, it is very rare that you will find a woman who is going to allow her man to have sex with other people and simultaneously sit around and not try to do something. There are some women that will go out and do something. Um, and I should have mentioned earlier that most men who go out to do that, I'm not expecting their partner to sit at home and not have sex with somebody else. They fully understand that their partner may have sex with somebody else. But here's the reality that, again, a lot of people don't want to talk about. Most women who are in a relationship already, especially if those women are of a certain age, usually over the age of 35, are not really interested in having sex with multiple men. Again, the caveat is they have a good husband. He is taking care of her. By taking care of her, I, I don't just mean taking care of her in, in terms of her love language and making her feel seen, making her feel desired. But he's actually having sex with her on a regular basis, whatever she's comfortable with. He's taking care of the kids. He's doing what he agreed to do as a husband. Um, sometimes there are men who believe that um, oh if I'm gonna if I'm gonna see a woman um, and I tell the woman let's say in dating relationships that I'm gonna date other women okay but I, I don't want to commit to a relationship it's crazy the number of men I've seen this a few times in our dating reboot program who will also assume that you know what but but if you if you want to date other guys then this is not gonna work out gentlemen it doesn't work like that if you want to be able to go out there and have sex with multiple women within a relationship, which makes it an open relationship, I suppose, understand that you cannot tell a modern Western woman that she can't do that. You have to be ready to deal with the fact that she wants to be equal with you. So she's probably going to try and go out there and do something. But most women over the age of 35, even if they did something like that, just realize that they're not really interested in that that they are more interested in stability. If you try to do that with a girl who's 22, 23, 24, it's not going to work out. Um, the next thing to realize is that a lot of women who may end up doing that, and this is not from personal experience, this is from experience just working with many clients who come from all sorts of backgrounds and all sorts of relationship types, many women who go out there actually end up with guys who are very clingy or who are nice guys. And then they realize that, oh, this is not what I wanted. While my husband can go out there and just have sex and come back and he still loves me and he still cares for me, I can't do that. I want to build a bond with this person, but I can't build a bond with him because he doesn't have the resources that 
my husband has. He doesn't have the history that I have with my husband. He doesn't treat me the way my husband does. He doesn't know me in that way. And that's one of the fundamental differences be in general, of course, between men and women. Men, in general, can go out there and have sex with a woman, and it's just sex. He's not falling for her. M women, in general, well, not many of them can do that, especially after a certain age. Seeing all the tools and skills that is going to lead to a divorce, it's going to lead to your children being segregated from you, it's going to lead to stepfathers entering. Okay, so what she's doing right here is that she's fear-mongering, right? She's saying that if you... If you end up being that type of guy in a monogamous relationship, here are all the horrible things that are going to happen to you, right? Divorce, going to court, her taking your shit, stepfathers coming in and, and um, uh, uh, raising your kids and the uncertainty of all of that. This is just fear mongering. In your children's home, these are not good skills. So having a high body count is a... Okay. She's done the, the fear-mongering thing, and she says you're, you're building up the skills to destroy your relationship. One of the things that she actually has not mentioned is the fact that most divorces are initiated by women. And they are not initiated by women. who are, that's, I believe the statistic is 70% of divorces are initiated by the female spouse. They are not initiated because the husband is promiscuous. Just to make it clear, this is not a huge issue. What she's talking about and the group she's addressing, let's be clear, is she's addressing men, the small group of men, or the men who are very ambitious, who want to get to that level of what she's referring to as a high value man. She's addressing them and she's telling them like, hey, if you try, to be non-monogamous, here are all the horrible things that will happen to you. What I'm trying to tell you is that I believe bad things will happen. My personal value is I don't want drama in a relationship. But I also know for a fact that many high-value men, not predicated by the number of women that you've slept with, but by other things, not this is not the video for that, do have that option and they do exercise it. But the majority of women don't like it. The majority of men don't like to hear it because they can't do it. And society in general frowns upon it. But that doesn't make it wrong if both adults are consenting. I just want to make it clear. Um, actually, before I end this video, I'm going to pick up another thing that she dropped on her um, on her Instagram page, which was, this one has 8,000 likes and 534 comments. Um, and she says, why being a promiscuous man is unhealthy? And I'm curious about this. The common advice online is suggesting that men have evolved to be promiscuous, and it is human nature, but this is not entirely true. Men have two evolutionary drives. One is for short-term and the other is for long-term mating strategy. And only the long-term mating strategy is beneficial for them in the future. So again, this, she's, you know, she always starts off, it seems like, not always, I've only watched one of her videos, but it's, a theme is emerging where she starts off with stating scientific fact, but then she kind of throws in her own agenda at the end, right? So common advice online is suggesting that men have evolved. This is not common advice online. This is scientific fact, not common advice, right? Men have evolved to be promiscuous. That's why we have those millions of sperm that come out every time we ejaculate. That's our nature, right? And she says this is not entirely true. Men have two evolutionary drives. One is short-term strategy and the other one is a long-term strategy. I want to make it clear. The short-term strategy and the long-term strategy have nothing to do with men being promiscuous. Men are still promiscuous, but they also have a long-term and a short-term strategy. What does that mean? I'll give you an example. Let's talk about, this is porn reboot, right? We, we help men who deal with uh, uh, an addictive behavior or compulsive behavior with pornography. We have a lot of men who struggle with, with an addiction to pornography, so to speak. And um, there's a lot of novelty. But then they meet a woman, they fall in love, 
they actually experience intimacy because there's no intimacy in pornography and they become monogamous. When they become monogamous and usually start, they pair bond, they have their first child, they move into a home together, they usually stay away from pornography, especially once their first child is born and they're raising their kids. But after, that's the long term. So that's the long term mating strategy. When they were viewing pornography, that was their short term mating strategy. And there are a lot of men who view pornography who do not have access to women. There are other men who just don't need to watch pornography that much because they do have access to women. But for the majority of men who do not have access to a short term mating strategy because they don't have game, pornography is the easy way for them to do that, unfortunately. Long term mating strategy, they're in a relationship and there's no pornography involved. But after a while, the itch comes back for many reasons. Sometimes they don't find their partner attractive anymore because she's gained some weight due to um, having children, which is a natural thing. But again, a lot of men don't talk about these things publicly because it's not, you know, it's not politically correct. It's not acceptable. It makes people angry. Like you should be, when you're in love with your wife, you should love her and you should be sexually attracted to her. No, a lot of these men still go back to pornography and some of them actually start stepping outside of their marriage. Why? This is because at the end of the day, men evolved to be promiscuous and men can adapt to a long-term and to a short-term mating strategy, right? Men can be married and watch a whole bunch of pornography. Why? Because you guys know what I'm talking about. Y'all know that. Men can also be married and choose to step out of the relationship. The moral judgment of that depends on who you're asking and who you're speaking to, right? And she says, but only the long-term mating strategy is beneficial for them in the future. For the couple in the long run, I agree. But that doesn't mean that the man's short-term mating strategy absolutely cannot contribute to the happiness of the marriage. Did you know that in almost all marriages, almost all long-term relationships, one of the partners had committed some form of infidelity. Did you know that? It doesn't matter what the infidelity is defined as. It could be like, oh, you went on a date with your high school sweetheart. You went on a business trip and had sex with somebody. It is shocking the number of people who have had affairs in long term. I got to find the statistics for you guys. But just bear that in mind and see what else. The main problem with a lack of monogamy is that it exaggerates the short term mating strategies which involve seeking novelty. The problem with seeking novelty is that there is no end to novelty and therefore the person is going to struggle to make the shift over to long-term mating strategies which involve investing and protecting the family. This is a very traditionalist view and I also disagree with it. Here's the reason why. She says that a lack of monogamy exaggerates the short-term mating strategy which involves seeking novelty. But this isn't true because the short-term mating strategy evolved for a reason. Like it's literally like looking at nature and saying nature is wrong. There's a problem with nature. There's no fucking problem with nature. The problem is always with human civilization and the human beings themselves, right? The short-term mating strategy is absolutely fine. Why do I say she's traditionalist? She is traditionalist because she is demonizing the short-term mating strategy and she is clearly for the long-term mating strategy, right? She's like, the problem with novelty, right? So short-term mating strategy equals novelty. The problem with seeking novelty is that there is no end to novelty. We know there's no end to novelty. When there's no end to novelty, then there's a chance uh, for you to get addicted to things like pornography, to things like sex. But then she jumps to this wild conclusion, which is, and therefore, the person is going to struggle to make the shift over to long-term mating strategies, which involve investing and protecting the family. And the reason I disagree with this is because it makes the assumption that all men are these kind of base animals, with, with these base beings that can't control their animal instincts, right? That just because they were watching a whole bunch of pornography, make no mistake, that's a short-term mating strategy for men who don't have game, right? And that's millions, if not billions of men who are engaging in that behavior with pornography, that somehow 
they are incapable of being with they're incapable of being with a woman in a long-term relationship this is not true many men have gone from being very promiscuous to deciding that they're going to have a relationship and sticking with it in fact there are more men who have had sex with a lot of women who have gotten into relationship and stayed monogamous than they are men who have watched a whole bunch of pornography and then they've gotten into a relationship because those men rarely stop viewing pornography the novelty thing continues right it also uh this this is a little bit disingenuous because it almost assumes that a man who has prioritized short-term mating strategies is somehow incapable of investing and protecting the family it may feel that way but again that's not necessarily the case going back to what i said earlier in the video that there are a lot of women who allow their partners to do this if the man is fulfilling what he needs to do if he's still taking care of the family if he's still fulfilling her needs if he's still protecting investing and providing it's not a problem again a lot of people will come up with things like oh but there's no way he's going to be able to do that if he's out chasing women and all these kind of things that's not what those men are doing those men don't the men who do that don't need to chase women <laughs> Do you get it? They're already high value men. They have access to it. The only reason, actually one of the reasons, not the only reason that they would even approach their partner with it is because that shit's being thrown in their face all the damn time. They know they have access to it. They're not abandoning their family to be with somebody. Now for a lot of partners, the female partner, that's a normal fear of people who are invested in the female partner or for people who are traditionalists who I invested in monogamy and the nuclear family that that's a big risk because he could fall in love with a woman but if there's one thing I understand is I understand the sexual nature of men a lot of these men are married they don't want to be with anyone else because and I know this for a fact because I've seen men try to kill themselves I've seen men just torn apart from the inside when their wife was about to leave them why because they love their wife. Their wife is their friend. That's the person they want to be. And their sexual behavior outside of that did not mean that they love their wife any less. I have never in all my years of coaching men to freedom from their out of control sexual behavior told a man that, hey, the reason why you're viewing pornography is because you don't love your wife. I've said that your wife probably feels that you don't love her or you might feel that way. But when you dig deep, you'll realize that you actually do love your wife. You may not be sexually attracted to her for one reason or the other, but you love her. As a result, it means that the children he has are more likely to end up in a broken home. Here we go with the fear mongering, right? So you better be scared, bro. You better be scared, right? Because the children you have, if, if you do the short-term mating strategy, you go out there and sleep with a bunch of women, um, they're more likely to end up in a broken home. They're more likely to be parented by stepfathers or scary. And therefore, they are less likely to be protected and provided for by him in a way that is required for healthy future developments, which puts him at an evolutionary disadvantage as he cannot provide and protect for his offspring. I will say this again. The type of man who has this option is not fucking it up. The type of man who has this option is the type of man who is fully capable of taking care of his family. If she's referring to the only reason I'm talking about this type of man is she started all of this with saying high value man. Now, one thing I will agree with her on is if she's saying that you think you're a high value man because you sleep with a lot of women, then yeah, I agree with her. You're a dumbass if you think that. And if you step out on your, your wife and your kids to have sex with other women, when you don't know how to manage your time, when you have not fully taken care of your family's current and future financial needs, when you are not satisfying your wife regularly, sexually, when you are not showering your family with love, when you're not there to protect and provide, if you're just like, well, how will I do all of those things and also have time to have sex with women on the side, then you're not that guy. Don't fucking do it. 
but just know that there are men who have that capacity, all right? And there are also men who end up growing up into that capacity. But that's it. That's that's my breakdown on this. I, um, I'd love to to know you guys' thoughts on this. Do you want me to keep shooting videos like this? Um, I know we talk about pornography addiction, but I think these are things that are happening in our society, and I think um, talking about it is important. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, whether you agree, whether you disagree with me, whether you want to see more of these videos, and um, we'll go from there. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'll speak to you later on in the week.